Hello, this is Don Victor, author of Drawn to Win, host of the podcast Drawn to Win, the director of the Academy of Composition, and the creator of the Core 80 Experience, also known as the C and Grow Rich in Art video course, which you can find out more information at core80.com. This is the Drawn to Win podcast, where I have the incredible privilege to draw artists from around the world into fun and meaningful conversations around art and life, and yes, maybe even a little food. You can hear us each week on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and YouTube. So make sure you subscribe so you always have a seat among friends. Let's get into the show. Dear Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this conversation. I'm really wanting to explore the words that have been on my heart today are gratitude, not gratitude, gratitude, generosity, and grace, the big, the three G's. So as you may lead, Made, welcome into the conversation. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me. Beautiful. Now I want you to say your whole name. Mireille Fournier. Blood. It's like poetry. <laughs> That's like something you would eat. Oh, you go to France, you eat the Moray Froche, right? I don't know. But uh, it's like, a, I don't know. It's like there's creme brulee and then there's you with a little flower on the side. I, anyway. <laughs> That's a beautiful name, in the way. Can you say it one more time for... Mireille yeah. Fournier. Wow, that's cool. It's very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Thank so you. a name like that, where in the world, literally, does that come from? I'm originally from Switzerland. Uh, yeah. A My chocolate. family came, came from the Huguenots. So I think the French kind of, you know, they were the nomads of the Europe. So oh. I got the French influence. And then my mom is German. And um, my my dad was Swiss, and so that's uh, where it all kind of. I'm a, I'm a good mutt. I'm a European mutt. <laughs> <laughs> I think of Swiss. I think of chocolate for some reason. I think, but I don't know why. Do you guys have a lot of chocolate there, or is that just kind of? No, it's the best chocolate in the world. Yeah. yeah. So when I think of Swiss and then German, I think of like a very very strong dark chocolate, almost like a baking <laughs> chocolate for some reason. <laughs> it's yummy, but slightly bitter. Um, <laughs> oh, I love it. What, how would you describe Swiss people? Uh, Swiss people are, they love their country. Um, mm -hmm. What I like about Swiss people, they love to travel. Mm. And uh, I traveled the world and Wherever I would go, no matter what little village somewhere in Fiji or Mexico, there's always a Swiss person. <laughs> it's like oh, it's wow. such a tiny country, but uh, they love to travel. Mm -hmm. um, I love, I love Switzerland. Oh, it's so beautiful, nice. um, and the people are very, very welcoming. And it's interesting mixture because you have four languages in Switzerland. Mm. You have four cultures. So you got a German, Italian, mm. French, um, and Red Romanish, which is a Latin version, and it's mm -hmm. a, considered a language, and they have a lot of pride. And so you get a lot of mentalities, like the yes. French Swiss are completely different than the Italian, so the Italian Swiss are completely different, and they're usually very compatible with each other, which is mm. hilarious. Because it's like <laughs> the tiniest country. So <laughs> that's cool. I, I never knew that. And uh, wow, yeah. that's that's really neat. Now, um, in my American ignorance, <clears throat> um, Swiss outside of chocolate and probably the world's most gorgeous women, um, outside of you know a couple of places like Puerto Rico, but um, the. <laughs> Is it Swiss that has like all the banks? I always get Swiss, Swiss and Switzerland messed up in my head. That's the reason why. So Swiss has all the banks. Like that's where all the money in the world is. Yes. So here's a real weird question. Um, how long, well, first, how long did you live, uh, live there? Uh, until I was nine. Okay. 
and I had a very humble beginning, so there were a lot of rich people around me. Yep. Um, the funny thing is I never felt poor. We weren't, the, we have a lot of, the nice thing in Switzerland, you don't really have poor people. Yeah. Because you have a lot of middle class. It's a very well taken care of country. And I grew up by the lake with mountains around me. So I never felt poor. I always mm -hmm. felt rich because it was so beautiful. You know? Well, that's what I wanted to ask you, you know, I'll tell you the reason why I'm trying to ask you this. Um, when I grew up, I, 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 my background, my parents, my biological parents are Puerto Ricans, okay? Mm -hmm. But because they passed away at an early age, I was raised primarily by Pennsylvania Dutch, you know, Pennsylvania white folk, right? Mm -hmm. um, and back when I was growing up, I always found it very strange and weird how the women always, like, took so much time to do the front of their hair okay there's a there's a point to this story they did the front of their hair it was always like big and puffy and like but when you look at the back of their head it was like a, a train wreck it was like oh right they never cared about the back and i can never understand this until i went to college and i was in my dorm room and we had a pool that year and my friend from puerto rico came over now I didn't really hang around uh, Puerto Ricans that much when I was growing up until I went to college. And he's like, he makes this comment, this girl comes walking out of the pool in her little bikini, right? <laughs> and he makes this comment. He's like, man, she's so flat, right? And I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, because to me, she, you know, she was from, she was ample, right? <laughs> but I didn't know, he, I, I didn't know he was talking about the back of her, not the front of her, because the way I was raised, we only looked at the front of people. We never even considered the back of them, right? So, so when I went to Puerto Rico, I'm walking around and I see the back of the heads of these women and their gorgeous hair in the back. And it dawned on me, what consciousness do you grow up in when you are known for people who come around from around the world come to your island to check out your butt, right? Like yeah. you have to take care of the back because that's the mentality. So with that said, I know that's a very long, weird story. The point is, what is the consciousness that is developed in a Swiss person when you know that the world brings all their money or a large chunk of it to your little country? And you're, and you're existing, you're kind of marinated, incubated in this aura of wealth. Like, I'm very curious to know what that has on, on a person. Uh, for me, uh, I think as a child, you just mm -hmm. don't really realize it. I just, mm -hmm. because we were just middle class um, and uh, very humble. We lived in an apartment, but we had this huge yard we grew out uh, my mom grew all of her own vegetables oh wow really from scratch everything and that's why i love to cook my mom cooks everything from scratch nice and then we had this beautiful lake lake zurich i grew up uh, uh in a in outside of rockersville which is a small town uh, i noticed though that my friends parents <laughs> They always had like, as you grow a little older, mm -hmm. they had always like the, the, the fashion, the pants, like the newest things. And they got picked up in a Range Rover. I didn't get picked up. I had a bicycle, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a privilege because, oh, yeah, um, yeah uh, but I lived so far away from my school. It took, uh, you know, like it was... I, it was, I think in kilometers, I think it was six kilometers each way, which is a long way wow, for a child. Like 12 miles, right? And I had to walk that twice a day because what? I had to come home for lunch and then go back. Oy. And I walked through the forest and the snow. And there, there I remember one winter, my, my, my shoes had holes. We weren't that poor, but my shoes had holes. Mm. I don't know. We, and I had two brothers, so I grew up really tough. Mm -hmm. No, there was no whining. There was no, I got beaten up, you know, 
they, they tied me up on a tree one night and they forgot about me. And what? my parents, yeah, in the winter. And my parents were like, where's Marae? And they're like, oh shit, we forgot her in the forest. <laughs> forgot her in the forest. But it made me pop, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you had to like, um, fight off that so wolf. I started to get more awareness of it, like skiing, for example. You're going to not believe this. So obviously Switzerland is a big skiing country. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's very expensive to ski in Switzerland. We couldn't afford that. We were a family mm-hmm. of five. You know, three Mm -hmm. brothers, Mm -hmm. three kids. So I noticed my my friends would always go ski. They would always do these things that we couldn't do. Mm. And then we had my god, my god and mother would they would go skiing, and they would take my brothers, and um, and I would usually go to Germany to my grandmother because I wanted to see her. So I never learned how to ski. Really? Which is, and to to today, today, it's shameful to be from Switzerland and not know how to ski. It's, it's absolutely shameful. <laughs> do, you, do you throw it back on people when they're like, are you really good at skiing? And then you're like, well, oh. why do you think we all ski, huh? You, it, it, <laughs> it's so, it's one of the questions, oh, you must be a good skier. It is so annoying because I don't know how to ski at all. <laughs> It is not. Yeah. yeah. I would have, yeah. but I was painting the whole time. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I would love to explore a little bit. Um, I'm just, just, just for a second. You're tied up on a tree. Yeah. For, for how long? A couple minutes? An hour? Hours? Uh, no, it's got to be, it had to be at least an hour and a half to two hours. I mean, what the heck was going through your head? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I think it was like <laughs> you put it out of your. That's what my brothers did. Like it was, you know, they would. My oldest okay. brother always wanted to be an Indian, and yeah, <laughs> you know, just like so he did. Like and and when they like it was either my brothers, both of them were against me, or I was with one of them against, <clears throat> you know, one of them. Now, just to clarify, you mean like an Indian, like an indigenous American Indian? Yes. Okay. Not, uh, from someone from that India. Was, so okay, they, okay. they were really like, and, and it sounds horrible, but you know, it's kids playing. Like, yeah. the, the beauty of it was we had all this nature yeah. to play in, you know? That's beautiful. That's, that is beautiful. <laughs> and to get tied up in, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're nine years old and yeah. the, pa- the family packs up. and My parents got divorced. Oh, okay. So one, fam- mom one parent. Was, okay. Yeah. My mom mm-hmm. was German. She wanted to go back to Germany. Uh, believe it or not, Switzerland was very conservative. Um, this is in 1979. Mm. Uh, now we re- revealed my age, which is fine. I have no problem about that. But it was very conservative, and women weren't even allowed to vote everywhere in each state of Switzerland yet. Oh. So she wanted to go to Germany because it was way more liberal acceptance you know for a woman to be divorced and have three mm. kids so we went back near where she came came from basically originally where'd you guys go we went to Aschaffenburg um it is a small town it's it's in Bavaria but it's literally on the border of Hessen and Bavaria so it's on the Main River. It's where all the cruises go by. It's a beautiful little town. It's mm. about 40 kilometers uh, of Frank- near Frankfurt. Now, I know somebody out there who just heard what you just said would be like, oh, my gosh, I so know that place. And then for the other 99.9% of us, we're like, oh, I have no <laughs> idea what she's talking about. Somewhere in Germany you were. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm going to have to go look that up and <laughs> – yeah, my it's 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 the words are very very interesting and it's like a foreign world to a lot of us, right? I've I've never been to Germany. Um, I would like you to go because the artwork and the architecture and things like that is incredible. Yeah. Um, and and I know that they're huge supporters of the arts. You know, oh yeah, you know, yeah. But, so how long were you in Germany then? Um, I was there till 1989. I left Europe. 
I had this, I think the heartbreak of leaving Switzerland at the age I left, Yeah. I never felt at home in Germany. Mm. Um, now I really appreciate it. Like I, but you know, you're, when you're younger, you don't uh, like, it was almost like moving to the slums. You're going to laugh. <laughs> and obviously it was not, mm. but in Switzerland, there was only like 12 people in my class. Mm. in public school and in Germany uh, it was 40 people whoa and I had to share my my bench with someone and I met my best friend <laughs> Simona and she said 10 meters distance and then it, the story began from there we're still best friends to this day yeah that's awesome does she still live in Germany or is he, she here she lives here in, in uh, LA now Wow, wow, because that's so you still me. our best friends, okay. You're still best friends. She came visiting me and over the years and she has she's married, has two kids here and did she get to try some of that sauce that you made the other night? She did not. No. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. It came out that's, so good. I bet it looks so yummy. But well, we'll I mean, save that for the end. Yeah, we'll, we'll save, save that, that for the, the end. end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so what are you currently working on right now? What's going on um, in your studio? Um, so because of COVID kind of, even I've mm -hmm. always obviously worked in my studio, but I've been spending a lot of time in my backyard and I nice. love hummingbirds. Mm. And I get hundreds on sundowns, hundreds. Mm. And I have a lot of feeders. And I know they're dependent on me now and I, take full responsibility when i go on vacation i actually pay someone nice. to fill the feeders because yeah. they do they do get dependent on you you know yep. Yep. um but i love i love i'm fascinated by their speed you know their beauty so i just started watching them even more and more and i've i painted hummingbirds before but this time I was like, you know what? I want to do a collection of hummingbirds. And because I want to do like a hummingbird show, mm -hmm. um, you know, it would be really cool to be, there's this um, rescue, bird res California bird rescue. I was like interested in doing something with them, um, maybe combined with the show. And I know now right now with COVID, I'm honestly, I like, I want to have a show where it's a little more relaxed, mm -hmm. you know, we can, enjoy wine and cheese and I know it'll it'll start happening again mm. um, but that's what I thought would be cool to do a collection of that uh, right now um, but I'm always switching it up I always kind of you know get fed up with one thing and then I put it in the corner and then I start another project and then I have commissions mm. um, and then I'll work on the commissions so, you know, and um, so, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Nice. Very, very cool. Yeah. Hummingbirds. That's where you're at. That's nice. My, my mom raises hummingbirds, so I'm very familiar with the sugar water and having to put it oh, out there. Wow. And, yeah. and they they go through those things like quick. But that's why they're all that's jacked up on sugar. Crack water. <laughs> crack, exactly. I was going to say crack, uh, crack water, but, but that's yeah. exactly <laughs> All of my the crack girls, addicts of the bird say, world. <laughs> and I tell you, my friends kept saying, how do you make yummy bird food? And I, and, I, and I was like, you know what? Now I'm going to make a video of it and I put it on YouTube. And I send everybody the video. <laughs> how I make it. I, I put my finger in it and I'm like, mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Southern sweet tea. But... Uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, they're they're gorgeous. I, I saw a video once where a guy, um, you know, they, they would come and they would eat out of his hand and stuff. Oh, oh, they feed out of my hand. Oh, really? That's all. Awesome. I'm gonna send you my YouTube video. They feed. I I have a little mini feeder, and they mm -hmm. just they, they, it's it's mm -hmm. oh my god, it's incredible. Mm. And that happens usually sundown because uh, that's you know, and then once one comes they kind of trust yeah. like they go oh, this one is eating and then they, they sit on my hand but it gets so windy it's like mm. hilarious it's like <sighs> like you're oh, in, a, yeah. in, a, in a tunnel of wind or or you know 
because their wings are going so fast and when you have a bunch of them that may yeah you could go out and get your hair blown like that they go 35 miles an hour what yeah Hmm. and they're only the only bird that can actually fly backwards wow that's cool that way and their 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 wings are like propeller so it's it helped me study them when i'm painting them Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I'm exploring different mediums. Like I'll do them in pastel. I do them in acrylic and oil. Like this one is in, in, uh, this one is in acrylic. And I actually enjoyed that because you can just kind of layer faster. Yeah. And then this little one was pastel, but, um, I like, I like doing different mediums. I really enjoy that. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So tell me your art journey. Like, how did you discover art? Like, what age were you and what, you know, what happened? You're you're never going to believe it, but I I started painting exactly five years ago. Five years ago. Five years ago. And you were um, uh, 24. What? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. And, you know, I've always been an artist. Uh, I mm-hmm. was an actress. I learned how to do. Make- I was a hairdresser, very first profession. Uh, learned how to do theater makeup, modeling makeup. You know, I, I, the cooking for me is an art form. Mm-hmm. Everything I do seriously is artistic. I I'm a knitter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm amazing. Like I can knit you anything. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. But um, the painting thing happened accidentally, and I, I and I'm I'm so I feel so blessed that I discovered it because I think I was always looking for what's my thing, mm-hmm. and I think when you do a lot of things in life, people don't take you seriously. I think because I had a very successful career as a massage therapist. Mm, nice. Um, nice politicians, you know, celebrities, actors. I toured with singers. I mean, it, that's another thing I fell into accidentally when I was acting because I needed to supplement, always supplement my income somehow. Mm-hmm. But the painting happened five years ago. I went with some friends to one of those wine nights mm-hmm. where you drink wine and paint. And I, uh, and I, it just was like a lot of fun. I'm like, this is so fun. And, uh, my girlfriends were like, how come your painting looks like so good? And I put like a naked woman in the painting <laughs> and, uh, and it just, and then I just realized this feels really good. You know, this feels good. That, that was all at that point. And then I thought, I'm going to get some paints and just explore. Uh, I played with painting a tiny little bit when I was acting, I had to play an artist in a scene in class at one point. So I yeah. kind of did like throwing some paint on the thing. So I've always liked it, but now I wish I went to art school. <laughs> if I would have known that was inside of me. Mm. Um, but then when I got these paints and I painted um, this ballerina was my first painting. And I, and I, it was a spiritual connection for me I was like oh my god this is what I'm meant to do and then I just went from there uh, studying and I tell you if it weren't for YouTube I'm really lucky because if it weren't for YouTube Mm. that's kind of how I learned Mm. I didn't know anything about painting and I just started following painters I started and I'm very um I'm an Aries. If I want mm, something, I'm yeah, going to get it. It's done. Yep. <laughs> it was the same with my massage career. You know, I still have people ask me, how did you have this? How did you get all the celebrity? I'm like, I've never tried it. I just did the best. I like wanted to be the best massage therapist there is. And I developed my own technique. And the same with the painting. All of, then when it clicked, I said, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Nice. And I'm pursuing it. And in humble, humble, the way I say it, I have so much more to learn. I learn every day. I know my my learning journey is never going to end. 
and I look up to fine artists and they, they you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just beginning, you know, but um, I'm now a solid two years a professional artist where I'm actually making a living as an artist. Mm. Um, I was lucky to have also, you know, high end clientele where I'm like saying, Hey, yeah, but before we hey. get there, before we get there, let's, <laughs> okay, let's talk about the okay. art a little bit more. Um, yeah, yeah. cause yes. that's a whole nother cool another story journey. in itself. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so we've teased you audience. <laughs> Keep listening. Uh-huh. Uh, um, where, what is part of your art, art process, your painting process? What's something in that process that you are kind of surprised at yourself that you're able to accomplish so well? What's one aspect of it? I mean, there's all kinds of aspects, but what's one aspect that you're like, oh, hmm. Um, I, 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 to be honest with you, sometimes, like when I do a portrait or, like especially like sometimes I look at it and I'm like oh my god I don't even know how I'm gonna do this mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and then I like my willfulness kicks in mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. I, I am very um, I have hard work ethics and passion and then I kind of go on this journey um, that's gonna sound weird but we artists are a little weird I do a lot of times dream about my paintings. That makes total sense to me. I think it has to do because I get so, let's say, especially if it's commission. Commissions are stressful for me because Mm -hmm. I want to obviously pay me. So it's like, wow, I want this to be the best painting ever. So I start dreaming about it. I, 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 I don't stop thinking about it. You know, mm-hmm. I think about my painting all day long, every day. Um, it's almost a curse because I can't look at the, anything normal anymore. I'm just like, how would I paint this? You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the so I, I don't know if curse. that answers your question. No, no, it does. I, it does. Um, yeah. It, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily a, a technique or a part of the process in terms of um, you know, like oh, I mix paint so well or color or something, but. I like the fact, and it's very Aries of you to rely on yourself, right? And um, and when there's that challenge to overcome, I like that you dream about it because you're ultimately coming back to relying on yourself to to push through and figure that out. Yeah. But dreaming is very important because it, it's a way of bypra- bypassing the brain, right? Because sometimes we start fretting and and restricting and uh. But then we go to sleep and that kind of gets shut off and then our soul speaks and we can begin to see process and it's more expansive and then our brain puts images to it, you know, and, 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 yeah. and figure, a lot of, there are many areas, especially artistically, where I grew probably 10, 20 years overnight because of dreams that I had that just unlocked understanding and I got up and I did it. I'm like, oh. <gasps> I figured it out, you know. Are and you an Aries too? No, no, I'm a Virgo. I'm on a Virgo Libra um, cusp there. So, mm-hmm. but probably out of my top five friends, four of them are Aries. You know, that's I because just, we we are actually incredible compatible. Um, because you're very calming, mm-hmm. and we're a little, you know, we're a little <laughs> out like ah. Oh. And that's actually very, I have a lot of uh, friends that are Virgos. And yeah. as Virgos, we like to th- overthink and think things. And we admire the passion and the just get up and go do it and, and win at it attitude. And, and, and not even the attitude, but the results, you know. And, and, yeah. and, and we're fascinated by that. And I think that's, at least in me, the reality is there's a level of jealousy. Not a bad jealousy, but just a... Mm, if I could be, you know, any zodiac sign, it would be the Aries. Because <laughs> intellectually, it's like, man, you got to get certain, you got to get results, you know. But especially as someone like myself, who's on that Libra cusp, because the Libra will tend to overthink to the point they're paralyzed, right? Because they uh, have to find balance and everything, and then right. then they get stuck, right? And so sometimes I get that way, right? 
now I have to lean into my my Virgo and kind of reorganize and da da da. But I always wish I could have the almost it's like almost like a faith in a sense of an Aries where it's just like they just trust themselves so much and they set that goal and and nothing will stop them from achieving it. And I just find that so admirable and respectable and and almost magical that I just find it fascinating. You know. So that's probably why they're all my friends because I respect them so much. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We're we're very oh, ah, determined. Yeah. It's funny. And I, the... I tell you. I tell you. I. And again, I say this in humble ways because I I hate you know when people I don't like to say I've only been paying five years because then people are gonna start looking oh you know oh she, she's not. I, I have a lot to learn, but I, I am going to make a mark in this industry. And, and, and it's not for my own ego. It's just like, I, I, I love it so much. I have to do this and I'm going to do it. The, the beauty is, you know, until I'm old, that's, that, that's a nice thing. You know, like yeah. I can do this in my seventies, go out there, plain air painting. Like I, I visualize that. Hopefully, health wise, I can do that. You know, mm -hmm. that would be a dream come true to do, to do that. And and you know, uh, and I admire the painters. I admire and follow them. And say, wow, you know, it's so mm -hmm. cool. Like that's it's it has no limit. Uh, obviously, your health has to be yeah. yeah you know most important. So yeah, it's a, it's one of the things why artists tend to live so long. As long as you don't get into like stupid, you know, behaviors like drugs and Absolutely. sexual practices and whatnot that end up <laughs> you know, killing you. But um, and by weird sexual practices for anyone who's going to get all crazy and oh, what do you mean by that? I just I'm just thinking of you know Egon Sheila dying of syphilis. That's actually the thought I was thinking. Nothing else. So gotcha. Yeah. Um, but. You know, as long as they don't get into like those kinds of behaviors that then, you know, restrict their life. Yeah. Artists tend to live very long uh, because they have something that they're so passionate about that gets them out of bed the next morning. Right. Absolutely. And, and, and when you lose a passion, it's one reason why older people, when their spouse dies, they usually die within three years after their spouse because you know, they lost a big part of their heart, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. They um, say that about twins too. Hmm, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, my, my friend Herman, the German, he's 93. I did that mm. portrait, you know, behind me. He has a mm. bad eye from, he was prisoner of war and he's, he's, he lives in Simi Valley. I live in Simi Valley and he's a musician. And that guy is unstoppable. I mean, mm. it's, it, it's just like his, that's the joy. You know, you have to have something in life that gives yourself joy. Mm -hmm. Whatever that is, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it could be as simple as gardening or <clears throat> whatever is your, your, your passion. I think that will make you grow old, happy, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that's the love you need. You need that. I think everyone needs that, you know, whatever that is for you, you have to find what that is for you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And for you, it's uh, painting. Yeah. Yeah. And cooking, anything Thank artistic, you. but the painting, who I'm, I'm <laughs> in love. So when I first met you, I saw a painting and my first reaction to the painting was I flicked my hair back and said, you can't believe it's not Bata, right? <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> you won't believe his bottle, right? But um, now, so I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Why in the world does that guy look so much like Fabio? <laughs> and uh, and, it, and it was. And so how in the, like, how did that happen? I can tell you very easily. Uh, I've been doing Fabio's hair oh, for really? 22 years. Wow. And what happened was uh, his 
his manager is an art supporter of mine. He's mm-hmm. commissioned me to do an ocean seascape painting. Mm-hmm. And um, which, you know, he's been following my art journey and he's an art collector. And he said, you're, I'm watching you, you know, I'm going to make your paintings now. And I really appreciate that. And then uh, he asked me to, he calls me up and he's like, oh, I have another job for you. And I was like, great, what? And he's like, I want you to paint Fabio and his dog that died 18 years ago, his favorite Great Dane. And I was like, no, (laughs) I was like scared, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, because he commissioned me, you know, it wasn't like, oh, I'm doing this for a friend. It was like, you know, and um, and the pictures, there weren't a lot of pictures because this dog, I remember this dog, I met mm. this dog um, and um, it was a great, beautiful, great Dane. And I said, okay, I'll do it. And oh, whoa, it was, uh, that was a lot of pressure. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I definitely, uh, one of my mentors, Dougie Wallace, helped me through that journey, you know. Uh, because she's an amazing portrait artist. And I, I did my first portrait with her, Herman, the German. Um, and uh, we would have studio time, you know, and, and uh, but that, that's all, it's always hard to do a celebrity because people know what they look like, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, we definitely decided let's, you know, let's do uh you know, I said, let me do a picture of him, you know, like 20 years ago. <laughs> and um, that makes sense with the dog, you know. So, yeah, that was uh, that was a journey. And uh, came out, it, I, I'm happy the way it came out. And, mm-hmm. um, and he loved it. Mm-hmm. And his manager, most important, which was my client, loved it. So... Mm-hmm. Yes. Cool. <laughs> that was now, is that the only one you did of him or did you do another one? Uh, no, that was the only painting the only I did of him. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, but I, 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 I guess it was a photo I saw of you with him or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, at the, uh, it was for his 60th birthday, so it was a gift from his manager for mm. him. And uh, so we did the painting reveal that night. Nice. You, know? you like yes. those, don't you? The painting reveal? Yeah. Uh, you mean like doing it on on on? Because I saw you do yeah, that. Just... I, yeah, you. I saw you do one. I, I where you did a painting reveal for a, for a lady, and um, and I was like, wow, that's actually really cool. Like, in terms of like pr- promotion, you know, like d- showing that kind of reaction and things like that. So, I I really think that's like the most exciting. That's like for me exciting. You know, mm. like when, especially like when you're cooking, you know, mm-hmm. you want to see that reaction. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm kind of, that is one area thing. We do like that attention, mm-hmm. you know, like it's, it's sort of my reward that they love it, you know, mm-hmm. not like, oh, I'm good or it's just like, oh, do they love it? You know, does that mm-hmm. make them happy? You know, that's, like, that's a little because, trick I do with my Aries friends, right? Like if I'm like... <laughs> Hey man, I got this great idea that I would have passed by you. Like they'll never respond, right? But I'll be like, "Hey, I was thinking about you, <laughs> and it made me think about this." And then they're like, literally, like two, within a minute, like, "What? Yeah. What was it? Uh, should I call you?" <laughs> and I'm like, out of I'm your like, hand. Exactly. Yeah. It's really true. Yeah. Um, let me let me see something. <laughs> okay. So have you done, worked with any other celebrities as well in terms of the painting? I have, I have, but um, they're kind of private. Okay, you can't reveal all those things. Okay. Yeah, yeah and, and there's certain ones, and, and I'm okay with that, but certain yeah, yeah, ones I sense. can post. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, because sometimes, you know, it's good, like on Instagram, obviously it's good to post to keep your following just going and stuff like that. Uh, but there's a couple of sometimes I can't, you know, yeah. and and it's a privacy thing. But um, yeah, that's cool. 
That's good. Cool. Yeah. Do you feel comfortable around celebrities? I mean, I guess you've worked with them for 20 years or whatnot. Like, I do. How do you? I, mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, um, you know, I, 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 I guess that's kind of why I was asking earlier about being in Switzerland and being around all that wealth and that kind of power and that kind of identity being floating around you. Because when I look at you in your life, I, I, I see kind of very similar in that way, but now it's within inside the United States and you're over, you know, in California and you're dealing with these people. And so, um, but now as an adult, as one who contributes artistically either through massage or hair or, or painting, what, what does it feel like being on the inside of that reality? I don't know the words. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to figure right, out. yeah. I know what you mean. Um, you know, um, one interesting thing, I've never gotten starstruck, I have to say. Mm. I've never really... I just see them as people. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of times... I think because the massage is such a caring, intimate yeah. thing. Um, obviously not intimate, yes. you know, me. <laughs> and, it, it's, it's, uh, and it started out with the hair because... You, when you think about it, you tell your hairdresser everything. Mm, <laughs> gotcha. You know, so it's like people trust you. And that started out with the hair. And then the massage thing, it's even more personal because now they're, yeah. you know, they're on that table covered with sheets, but they're, you know, they, you know everything about them. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's, I, I know everything about all of my clients and I would never reveal it. I don't, mm-hmm. I've, I think that's a sacred thing for me. That's why I stayed in the business for so long. Mm. Um, because you know, you know, their, their secrets, their insecurities. And I just see them as, as a, a friend. Like when a friend comes to me and say, Hey, I'm really hurting. Um, and I, I uh, just kind of, for me, I've never been like, oh, my God, it's so-and-so. I just never, I've never had it. I don't know why. Um, You can put anybody in front of me. (laughs) And the weird thing is when I met, if I do meet someone outside of my business, Mm -hmm. like in a restaurant, I get like totally like, oh, I can not talk to them. I don't know why. I think because I know they want to stay private. Yeah. They don't want you to come up to them. You know, it's such a personal thing. Um, And I kept a very, um, there's really a boundary you have to keep. And I've become friends with a lot of my clients over the years. But there is that small boundary where most people don't keep that. They'll be like, oh, she's my friend or he's my friend and they just kind of keep yeah. asking questions or and it, the fact is you know even they may be my friend like i could say fabio fabio is my friend we mm-hmm. friend you know i mean he comes over to my house we're friends but there, there's certain people they're my client you know and i yeah. don't cross that line of asking or you know or Asking them, especially don't ask them for favors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was <laughs> sitting know, at a don't table. Get that one shot. That I was sitting shot. at a table of, um, there was probably about four guys there, and I knew at least two, if not all, uh, three of them were, were millionaires, right? And, and I had the privilege to sit at this bar with them, and they said to uh, they were talking, and they said, so would you rather owe someone money or a favor? And they're like, oh, I would rather owe them money. <laughs> like, like that favor, they hold so, so close to them. They rather just, you know, let's just put yeah. a number to it. Let's, you know, whatever. So, yeah. I, I, and, they, and there's definitely that fine line. And the beautiful thing is my clients are so supportive of my art, but I don't like over, so and kind of over the years, I don't like, oh, this is what I'm, you know, it just happened naturally Yeah. that they saw my stuff on Instagram or Facebook and then, or, or through a friend and, and say, wow, you know, I didn't know you're a painter and 
then I'd be like, oh, I'm having a show, you know, but mm-hmm. not like pushy, you know. Because, yes. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely um, kind of, that's beautiful. yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I have another friend who's an Aries, uh, who's a painter. And, um, and the access that he has to uh, people, politicians, and, and, and just people of power, uh, celebrities. I remember when we were back in college, he, he would say, brother. He talks, he's from Bulgaria, right? He's like, brother. Um, <laughs> I am going. It, his, name was, his name is Kirill. So, but he always talked in the third person. He's like, uh-huh. the Kirill shall walk. The kings, <laughs> right? And so, um, and I'm like, okay, buddy, you know, like, love you. Yeah. So one day he calls it, he calls me, he's like, and he, I think he was still in Savannah, but he was going back to Bulgaria. And he's like, brother, I, I know what the Kirill is going to do. The Kirill, he's going to paint so big that no gallery can hold the Kirill, right? And I'm like, okay, man. And three years, la- he, three years later, like he had this vision of creating these paintings and they were 10 feet by 20 feet tall, right? He did 122 or 144 of them, something like that. There was no museum in the world that can hold them, right? And so they would put them throughout the parks. And, and I saw his first show in Bulgaria, in Sofia, Bulgaria, and he's walking down with the president of Bulgaria by his side, right? Wow. I'm like, oh my gosh, he said, I will walk with kings and galleries will not be able to hold my work, right? And so his shows traveled around the world and he's, he's you know, with their photos with celebrities and all kinds of, you know, it's, it's been very cool. But in a strange way, you would you never get the sense, even though he has access to certain things, you never get the thought like, hey, man, like, let me ask you a favor. You would never approach him because just kind of just like what you're saying, there's like this sacred bond that he would never cross. And knowing him, you would never even, it never even comes up, right? And, yeah. uh, and, and so I find that very interesting. Um, and I think a lot of that honestly comes from having a certain level of self-awareness, self-confidence in yourself, right? And, and I think self-value, like self-worth, right? And that's something I've always, and every single Aries person I know, they have this incredible clarity of their own worth. And, and so they're never, they just seem to be people who are never really put down or like, hurt, you know, and, and so that, that's, that's cool. I commend you on that. Thank and, you. Um, you know, and I also want to just commend you on, on your massage um, career. Um, like you said, with, with hair and massage, you know, there's always the surface of what one does, but then there is the deep reality of what one is doing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of people, oh, you're massage. You're just, you know, you're massaging that person, you know, and you get paid for that or what? And it's like, no, you're actually, you know, caring for the inside of that person, you know, even though you're touching their outside, but like, it's deep, you know. And so, it is. You know, did did you realize that before getting in up front, or is that something you kind of discovered as you got into it, or the craziest thing? I started massage kind of like I started a painting. It was accidental. Mm. It was completely accidental. Um, I was on set um, uh, as an actress I was <laughs> doing a Steven Seagal movie. Oh, okay. um, yeah, and I was Sister Rose. It was a nun. And uh, Steven hurt his foot. And, um, you know, I started it and cracking it. And he's like, oh, you should, you know, become my therapist. And at the time, I'm like, you know, like, no, no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I was just like scared, but, you know, he was with a partner and he's like, no, no, legitimately, I really need a new person. Mm. And he was my first client. It, it was what? crazy. That's it was incredible. crazy. <laughs> yeah, he was my first client and he taught me how to do massage and essential oils. Really? Like ninja. 
It, like I mean, he, Stephen, Stephen has um, a lot of knowledge because of yeah. the martial arts. Yeah. And, um, and again, you know, it was like, you know, I was like, oh, I'll do it. But he had his own table. See, I didn't even have any. I was like, I'm not a professional. He's like, no, no, it, I don't. He said to me, this is interesting. He said, you don't, you, you, I don't want a professional. I want someone mm. who knows what they're doing and you naturally know what you're doing. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah. That's powerful. And that's how it all started. Yeah. That's how it all started. <clears throat> and I know people like, <laughs> you like have all these thoughts. And I'm like, Hey, you know, his girlfriend was there. Yeah. Well, um, if you needed, room. you could have done his hair afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, he he had someone else for that, but you know that was that was like sort of like my first client, and then um, I was pursuing acting, and I thought, you know, I really enjoy the healing aspect, mm -hmm. and then also when I had my son, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the autism didn't really show till much later. Uh, my son was diagnosed with autism, but I would massage him from mm -hmm. birth on. And I would do baby massage, and I did that a lot for, for a lot of clients too. Mm. Baby massage, and really, yeah, yeah, and essential oils, and it's just like, it's just such a beautiful thing. It's really part of my art journey in a way because um, I, I I love I love helping people, you know, yeah. healing people, and like I want to do the same with my paintings, you know, mm -hmm. make them feel good, happy. You know, uh, so um, that was, then I said, you know, I'm going to get my own table. I'm going to do this on the side. And it was great because uh, and, and at the time I was also working at the Ivy as a, as a waitress. Mm -hmm. Again, anything to make, you know, income pursuing acting, you know, was mm -hmm. like one of those things. And um, then I had to quit my waiting job because I got so busy with massage. You know? Oh, wow. That's and cool. Then all of a sudden, I got attached to yeah. movies with my clients, actors. They say, hey, you're booked with that movie. You're going to Hawaii. You go yeah, I mean, it was just like done. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> it was just like, hey, you're on the plane to go there. And I just kind of, that's how it happened accidentally, really. You know, just like the art in a way. <laughs> so, yeah. Beautiful. So where, where do you want to go in the next, say, five years or so uh, with the art? Um, I have really big dreams. Yeah. And it reminds me a little bit of uh, your guy that said <laughs> paintings. I, I think my paintings would fit in gallery, but I, um, I'm lucky I have a beautiful studio, but mm -hmm. I, I, my, I want to do some really big artwork yeah. that wouldn't fit into here. Yeah. So I'm envisioning a barn where I can work Beautiful. out of. Mm -hmm. You know, I really want to be free. I love, I'm grateful again. I'm grateful I have a studio because not everyone has a studio. Mm -hmm. But my studio is at home. And when you're at home, yep. you're get, you <laughs> get interrupted. And it's a lot My sometimes you want to get interrupted because you're stuck and you're like, oh. Mm -hmm. And then someone says, oh. My husband is like, oh, you. I have something really good to eat for you. I'm like, okay, great. You know? <laughs> so when you're away from home, you know, that's definitely yeah. one of my goals to have a studio away from home. Yep. Um, I, uh, I just got to have so many dreams of, of, of what I want to do. I, I, I'm finding myself as an artist and I want to find, my goal is to find my thing where you recognize a painting and say, oh, it's, you know, it's a Fournier. Yep. That's, that's my Fournier. goal. I mean, I know I'm kind of all over the place because I'm still. But, that's, but you're only five years in and you're trying yes. to figure your voice out. Right now you're still le you're learning how to talk, you know. Yes, exactly. And, yeah. And that's. Um, and I, I'm, I'm another five years, amazing you're... mentors, you know. So I, I always study, study. Like I, there's not Who a day. I, um, well, I, I, again, I do a lot of online study. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm cooking, there's not, I'm not cooking and not watching some art video. Cause that, 
I do you wanted, have a few? Do you have a few that you you just like that you go to that you just love watching? Yes, um, uh, I love Andrew Tischler. Okay. Oh yeah, the um, guy from uh, the New. Uh, what is that? New Zealand or something? Yeah, he's a New yeah. Zealand artist. Um, one of my other mentor. Uh, I have not studied in person with Andrew, but I want to. But I I have studied in person with Richard Robinson. Um, uh, who's an amazing Australian art, artist, uh, also New Zealand artist, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, also Scott Hamill, uh, who is a plein air artist from Carmel. Um, mm -hmm. He's one of my uh, go-to artists. He, he, he does plein air, a lot of seascape, but I love his freestyle. I love Dougie Wallace, who's a portrait artist. She taught me how to do pastel. Um, so those are my go-to kind of, um, um, I even done a lot of Nolan Clark. He's an Australian mm -hmm. artist. He had an online, he has like online classes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and so I'm learning from everyone a little bit, you know, um, uh, one of my really favorite artists of our time is Aldo Luongo, who is an Italian artist, and I just love his style. I had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of times. Um, he doesn't really teach, but I'm hoping I can sneak into his studio one day. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Putting it out there, Aldo. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like I pursue artists that I admire. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, I study the masters, like I'll you know, go to museums and study, you know. So I'm, I'm figuring out who I want to be. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, right now, I would say I'm more of a contemporary realist, realism artist, but God, I just love the loose style too, the impressionistic style. So I, I'm still kind of naturally leaning towards realism when I paint, but I want to want to be more loose. Yeah. You're going you know. through that phase where you're saying, I want to be an artist. So a good artist looks like this, but you're having that conflict where it's like, you know, that's really kind of almost irrelevant because you have to have your own voice, but you have to have right. enough experience to get to that point where you can speak your own language. And, exactly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and so that I, it'll be very fascinating when you, get to a place where you can flow mm -hmm. and um because it's interesting like you're not a uh you're a driven directed person but you don't come off as a tight person right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you're in control but you're not controlling right like that's how i that's the vibe i get from you mm -hmm. and, yeah. and right right now your work is very controlled you know it's very tight and in that it's 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 like you have to get it right. And in that vibration of having to get it right, even though it looks right, it, it still vibrates with a little uncertainty, right? Absolutely. But, but it will, but, but over time, as you get more comfortable, you'll start, that'll start to fade away, you know? And yeah. then it's just, you know, but you're still. One thing I know naturally when I kind of, what feels really good to me is texture. I really mm. love texture. And um, I don't know if you've seen my elephant, but I, text I, I did a 3D mm. of him. Um, and I do an another commission right now, American Buffalo, huge yeah, paint. Yeah. Textured with texture paste and then painting mm -hmm. in oil. Um, I love doing that. Like, like the texturing is like, oh, I don't know what it is. I just like love, maybe it's because I like to work with my fingers. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I just love texturing things. And then I like that about when paintings have texture, like when you can, you know, I, 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 I got you. I got you. Yeah. Something that I'm attracted to that. I know that, which, you know, yeah, because you know, as a hairstylist, you're touching hair, you know, as a, mm -hmm. as a, um, Massage, you're touching a person. Masseuse, you're touching a person. And yeah. in, with both hair and massage, just like an actress, you're really embodying an idea that you're then pushing out of yourself or communicating something, right? With, through, you know, 
physically. You know, you're they're yeah. all performing arts, and that's you're, you're trying to take a fine art, and then you're like, oh, I like it when it becomes a little more of a performing art, you know. And so, yes, that's, exactly. That's uh, I I totally would encourage you to spend time learn like playing with that, you know. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. At the same time, developing the fine art skills, right? Which, which may be more drawing based, design, composition based. Like, how do you order things, you know? But then playing more with a, a, a actually visceral, textural type of medium, you know? Exactly. You, you yeah. might even enjoy getting into sculpture at some point. I tell you right now, I, it's one of my goals. Yeah. And um I love I I know I just I just have dreams about it. I know I'm going to do sculptures. I don't know why, but I uh and Degas, Degas is one of Edgar Degas, you know, is one of my favorite and I love how he did the the pastel, the oil mm-hmm. and the sculptures. You know, I could see really myself doing that. If I was coaching you, this is what I would say. As you paint your hummingbirds right now or you you paint anything challenge yourself and i use that word specifically because of you challenge yourself to have at least three different views of that object so if you do the hummingbird do one from the profile one from underneath one from over top you know just to help train your thinking in terms of three-dimensional form right or being able to see things from different angles, because that's what a sculptor is going to do. They have to, you know, they always have to keep like these different angles in mind at at the same time. And so it might be, you know, it might be a way to kind of help develop that sensitivity for you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's great advice. Thank you. You might even play like a Picasso, you know, no, I don't really see you as a cubist, but the the principle of the cubist, you know, is let's say there's a table and you paint the table that which you look at, which is from one perspective. Yeah. Picasso was playing with an idea that said, what if you could draw, what if you could see, you know, pull yourself out of time and be able to see the top, the sides and the bottom of the table all exactly at the same time? Right. <laughs> yeah. And so he would blow things apart, a guitar or t- whatever, right? Like, yeah. it, you know, that's, um, that, yeah, you can even so, play with some ideas like that as well. Yeah. 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 I definitely want to pick your brain. Mm-hmm. Not done with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. So let me ask you, if, you if, if a young artist walked into your studio and pulled over a chair and said, Mireille, what, what advice would you give me? I want to I wanna be serious about art. What's, what's something that you would share with them? Share with them, go to museums, mm-hmm. look at lots of different paintings for sure. Mm-hmm. Pick out the artists that you like. And then start looking at artists that are living now that are have the similar style and start. And that's the wonderful thing about the internet now. Uh, you know, it, God, if you're a young person, go to art school. Even I've never been to art school, but in a way I wish I would have to learn all the techniques, the, the basis. Um, I would definitely also tell that young artist to pencil draw, charcoal draw, learn composition. It, just like a ballet dancer, you know, mm-hmm. learns that, like learns that basic of dance, that hardcore basic, and then you can reach out and do hip hop, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. reach out and do. Uh, and that I'm kind of doing that backwards in a backwards way, you know, because I, I'm honest, I, don't you know I I didn't go to art school and it, it bugs me. <laughs> don't don't let it bug you because um don't let it bug you because um the truth is if when you sit down and talk to serious artists who went to art school 
almost all of them are disappointed in their education. Mm -hmm. They paid a lot of money Mm -hmm. and um, they did not learn the stuff that would have made them great. They they either had to go get an apprenticeship somewhere. They had to spend the last 20, 30 years really studying. Finding themselves. Yeah. 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 I I just talked to a great artist uh, the other day and it was after college after going through, he went to college back in the eighties and it was after college that he discovered Sargent. Like what? He discovers singer Sargent after art school. I don't know who he was. And so it's like, okay. Um, So I I just encourage you. That makes me feel good. Thank you. And if, 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 if you need to go to school, there probably to just to develop solid skills in drawing a nice small atelier would probably be the Mm -hmm. best place to go Mm -hmm. now the sad part of the ateliers is you'll learn how to draw and even paint but all i've i haven't met one yet that understands composition and design very well interesting you know so they'll go through i've I've talked to people who spent years in those places incredible artists and painters and still walk away feeling very very weak as a composer, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So that that's that's yeah. very different. But an atelier, um, if you could ever take a, a nice summer course or something and physically go and just submit yourself to their training system, mm-hmm. it would it would do wonders. Uh, you would love it. You would love mm-hmm. the the challenge of it. And I tried to sketch too, like you know, um, like. When I was in Germany, you mm-hmm. know, sketch like I ske- I, I sketched this piece, yeah, you know, nice. mm-hmm. um, and then just kind of and I tried to do a little looser, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's pastel. But um, what's the one above you or behind you? Uh, this one? Yeah. Oh, um, that oh that one is a plain air painting from um, Switzerland, um, Lake Lugano, mm-hmm. uh, and I started painting it there but i ended up it, I, I finished it in my studio oh and that's close to my heart only because it's switzerland and i love uh lugano but this is morcote a tiny little village okay so for people who are listening to this you will not be able to see this now with that said do you have a photo of this i do yeah send it to me after this and then I will update the album art and I'll use this one instead of the painting of the girl with the horse. Oh, okay. Well, well whatever you, I mean, whatever you want. I, I mean, I'm proud of the painting with the girl with the horse. Well, you should be. You should be. I will say this out of everything we talked about in terms of you, for some uh-huh. reason, this one I feel is probably going to be more closer to your ultimate style than the other stuff. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's probably a, because I mean, really you know yeah yeah there's the love there there's the history the intimacy which is very very important Mm -hmm. but there's also a looseness to it and a confidence and a playfulness and yet you still have uh like that water that's incredible like the shifts of values and tones and that that's going on in there it's it's beautiful and there's a lot of great skill that's going on in there that's still resonating through, but it, mm-hmm. but it also feels just more free and authentic and, and like calm, you know, and that, the, not, that energy comes through the brushwork, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. when I'm teaching people drawing, I can tell what people are thinking when they're thinking it, because when you're around line so long, it transfers energy and, and energy moves through thought. So you can right. see what people are thinking through a line. Like they get freaked out by it. How, how do you know that? I'm, like, oh, I'm reading the line, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. And that's what's happening when I look at that painting. I'm like, yeah, I can see you doing a lot of paintings in that direction. Thank you. Because I really kind of tried to apply a little more looseness. I tried to apply, uh, you know, a little more grace. Mm-hmm. Also, you know, because... Yep, yep. I love color, but um, it, I think um, it just like applying the techniques I'm learning, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and then discovering true. my own thing, you know. 
That's cool. So as you're working and you're doing commissions and you're working on your own work um, and you're doing little openings and or big openings or, you know, um, and you're in this business of yeah. selling and ma making and selling art, who are some of the people in your network that help you facilitate this career as an artist? Um, uh, whew, you know, um, I, to sell, are you asking to sell my art? How no, I'm, not necessarily. It could be, it could be a gallery that I you're working with or where you get your supplies. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I yeah. gotcha. Definitely. I would say social media is a huge tool. Huge tool. Okay. Which one do you uh, like the best? Um, I, you know, I underestimate Facebook because I, I think Facebook, like I, I post stuff on Facebook as like privately and fine art by Fongay. And then a lot of times people, it's people I know, they say, Oh my God, can you paint my dog? And mm. or can you paint my daughter? Um, Instagram is more worldwide. Um, I think Instagram is a little more, um, I think it's more for, let's say when the galleries look and Google your name, they look at your Instagram, you know? So I think Instagram is important worldwide, but a lot of the sales I do through, you know, and, it, I, and a lot of times it's connected, but a lot of times I'll post a painting and they're like, oh my God, I want that painting. And a lot of th uh, that's a lot of times how I sell my art. I have a website which needs some work. That's one thing I'm going to work on too. My website needs definitely a little work. But a lot of times it's, it's just like with the massage. I never got my celebrities through advertising. I just got them through word of mouth. Someone so said, so, oh, wow. So you so, found that Instagram, that in Instagram really presents you as a professional. Yes. And mm -hmm. Facebook is really where people feel comfortable enough to actually uh, approach you on sales for sales. Yes. A lot of times it's people I know or have met in the past. Um, uh, now that I've done some commissions like the girl with the horse or, mm -hmm. or people, people uh, or, or Fabio or what, then some pe so people are like, Oh, can you paint my daughter? You know, yeah. like they see it and they like it or, uh, they'll they'll be like oh you know i i painted my dog mm -hmm. and i put that on facebook and i'm like oh can you paint you think you can did sometimes people send me a picture and say hey can you you think you can paint my dog mm -hmm. and they're like sure you know so um the irony is too my neighbors mm -hmm. um i have kind of my studio i open the door even during covid people are jogging by <laughs> you know i'm in suburbia simi valley which is really nice. Thank God I'm not in the city anymore. I used to be in oh, LA. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. This, this has been nice. I can jog outside with my dogs, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people come by and it's like open studio. Like people walk in and like, oh, uh, is that for sale? I'm like, everything you see is for sale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the business of selling art. <laughs> And awesome. sometimes it gets a little attached to stuff, but you know, I'm like, yeah. it's for sale, you know? And, and a lot of now it's like my, one of my neighbors, uh, like bought two of my paintings already. And she's like telling everyone about it. That's cool. Look at you. Yeah. You know, so, you're, you're, care, you're taking care of your, your community there. I am. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Nice. Uh, so yeah uh so i hope i answered your question in that oh yeah well yeah you said uh, social media so i think that was a, I, I a good answer learned, um i mean again like i think uh, it's a, i i mean i think also you know people like richard robinson who's been an artist forever who really um like i did already three three one-on-one -on -one workshops with him, plein air painting. 
and 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 he does the online DVDs and online. I mean, I I, I think I learned a lot, like a lot of times he sells his stuff off the easel as he paints. Mm. Mm. He's pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, he's just like, you know, he's an amazing <laughs> artist. But people walk by, and I have sold my very first plain air painting that I did. Yeah. Uh, you know, I like person walk by. You know, it's like so you you never know. You never know. Wow. Do you consider yourself a lucky girl? I am. I feel very blessed to do what I love to do. And, and I don't take it for granted. And I, again, have a lot to learn. And I'm going to just enjoy the journey, you know. Indeed. Indeed. The artist's Indeed. journey. That's beautiful. Well, but I, let me ask you, before I ask you how people can get in contact with you, let me ask you the most important question that okay. I've asked you. And that question is, so what do you like to eat? Oh. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. I love, oh, I love pasta. Oh. Homemade, <laughs> though. Homemade. You make homemade pasta? Oh, absolutely. Actually, I have to <laughs> say, I got to give my husband credit. He makes the, he, I, I'll, he made. He is a pasta master. He makes wow. homemade pasta, homemade raviolis, homemade linguines. But when I go, when I go somewhere, like oh, like oh, when I went to Marcotte and the pasta is homemade, or the risotto with the mushrooms in the big Parmesan meal, like you know when they mm -hmm. just scrape the ah, oh, it's just ah, oh, I love that. I love mussels, clams. Mm. Love lobster. <laughs> um, I I'm a I mean I, you know it, it it it's funny because I love animals and it's like oh when I went to see the, the especially Swiss barbecue cows. on them. <laughs> no, when I went to see my when I went hiking up in Switzerland and I see all these happy cows, I want to become a vegetarian. You know, uh, I love their cheese, but then like a good good filet mignon. Mm. Once in a while, I don't eat a whole lot of meat, but I, man, I'm a foodie. I love to eat and I love good wine. Um, I enjoy it. For me, that's a whole, like, for me to explore a, a chefs mm. around the world and God, you know, it's an art form. Have you, um, do you, do you travel a lot? Yes, I do. So what's your, one of your one of your top five greatest meals that you had in a different country? Oh, man. It could be the top <sighs> one. It could be the fifth one. You know, just, just one of those ones that you just. Uh, just the one on top of my head. Um, mm -hmm. So there's like the simple food. Uh, and then there's like the, like when we had that risotto in Marcotte, right along that little mm. spring. And with the with the porcini mushrooms and the mushrooms were like mm. like from the forest and then he scratched the par it came in this huge parmesan wheel and he made it in I think they cook it first and then they put it in the wheel and they scratch that fresh parmesan with the porcini mm. mushrooms. I mean that was <laughs> that was definitely memorable. Mm. Uh, another thing that um it stuck in my head Lisbon last year. Mm, that's right. You went to Portugal. That's right. Those little the um, pasta de natas. Yes. Oh, oh my God. God, I miss them so much. I wish I had never tasted it because I could never. You can never. And this was the one the pasta. I, I learned to make them. Oh, I, you said that. <laughs> oh. it, took, it took me months and months to figure it out, but uh, coming over. Uh, but man, that that was another one of those just in their little coffee, you know, their espresso. Yeah. That was another combination that was just like, mm. damn, I can never For get this five anywhere, months. You know? That's um, what I ate every morning was uh, a. <laughs> 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 
quiero ah. un, uh, un, un, un expreso, por favor, y uh, pasta de nata. <laughs> Gracias. Yeah, and then, oh, Obrigado. God. <laughs> Germany, you know, Germany is so great. It's like, oh, there's yes. like in my town, there's this co stuff called Kochkäse. It's <laughs> called cooked cheese. Mm. And you go to the beer garden, they have this dark bread that's homemade, and you dip the bread in it. And, and, then, uh, and then they have Frischkäse, which means fresh cheese, and it has like, It's, it's like this cheese with the onions and you dip that with the dark bread. That's another one. Just simple food that's just homemade oh. from scratch. Oh, it's, I can go on. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm really, and, and then um, uh, Italy, I always like, oh, in Italy, you know, when you get muscle, when you buy the ocean, you get fresh mussels. Mm -hmm. And it's just simple with the, you know, garlic just like this a lot of times it for me and i have to say i, I lived in australia for three years in sydney mm -hmm. the best produce in the world <laughs> mm. really wow. so the fish nice. the, i don't know what it is it's just untouched there it's mm. just like and they have a lot of uh the, the, i love thai and indian food oh mm -hmm. my god the best thai and indian food in the world australia <laughs> so weird to say Probably that. Great the best Thai in Indian food. Yeah, but it's just like because there's so many immigrants from there, you yeah. know, so you get all that original flavor. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Indian food I can eat every day. Indian yes. Food. Yes. <laughs> I yeah. love Indian food. You make me hungry. <laughs> it's, um, I, I often eat Indian food as a reward. If I have a day where I just feel like, wow, I... I accomplished something or, I, you know, been working towards something that came through. Yeah. Um, it, Indian food will tend to be my celebration food. And, oh, uh, now I, every day I can eat that. Yeah. Every day. My, yeah. my friend, she owns a, she's from Nepal, but she owns a Indian restaurant. Oh. And, uh, So now it now it's become much more of just uh you know, it's become much more of my diet than, uh, than just an award food for me. But oh. Yes. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Another one is med like they call it Mediterranean food, but it's really to me Lebanese food, you know, mm. like the hummus and the oh yeah. The grilled yep. chicken and the You know what that's I another made? food. Yeah. I made something very strange the other day. It it's probably somebody knows what it's called. I don't know what you call it. But I was making some bread and uh -huh. but I want but I but I like hummus. Uh -huh. So I, I took a can of chickpeas, put them in yeah. a blender, some salt, pepper, you know, I think I put an onion in there, some oil, and I, boom, yeah. you know, and instead of using, and then I, then I added just a little bit of water to make it runny. Yeah. And instead of using water with my, to make my dough, I used this hummusy chickpea mix, right? Oh. Put it in there, boom, 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 boom. And then I baked, baked it. And I did it twice. I once put yeast in it, and so it kind of blew up like bread. But, oh, my gosh, it was so good. But oh, the wow. last time I made it, I didn't put the yeast in, and I kept it as a flat bread. And uh -huh. I, it was so good. But to have, like, it infused with that chickpea, uh, yeah. it, it, was, yeah. it was an incredible uh, uh, experience. But um, yeah, that sounds yeah. delicious. Maybe, I make maybe, my home hummus maybe, almost all the time. Yeah. Maybe um, at some point in the in the near future, once we're past COVID, one of my fantasy dreams is to um, set up a, a world tour where we can go paint and eat, and I would love to just go places like along a, a shore, oh. like, you know. Go Ireland, Portugal, Spain, Italy. For me, you know. that would be a dream. That right? Yes. Oh. <laughs> And when you come to California, you have to visit us. Because I tell you what comes out of our kitchen between me and my husband. And then when my mother is here, forget about it. Oh. it, it when my mother is here, she comes for four months for the winter. That's beautiful. I, I don't even go in the kitchen because it's like way, it's like a freaking Iron Chef competition going on. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you guys, like. But like it is hilarious. Like because yeah, you cook, like, she cooks, and then it seems like your husband's a cook too. And then, cook too. Cooks, and then yeah. it's like, oh, I do the best chicken broth. And then, 
I don't do the German way. And I'm like, okay, you guys battle it out. I'm but that's why I, I bet so <laughs> much great stuff comes out of that kitchen because of that oh, competition, right? I tell you, and you know what the sad thing is? Me and my husband went out on a date for the first time in obviously months because of stupid COVID. And we went out to this really good restaurant. And we looked at the menu and we're like, okay, what's on this menu that we can't make? <laughs> and it was literally... We're like, ah, clams and linguine. You know, we make our own pasta and we get the clams fresh and see. Yeah, that's all. Then, you know, short rib ravioli, we make that. I make the best short rib. Oh, like, and then, I, okay, that's out. So we go through the menu, caprese. We're like, we grow our own tomatoes. We make our own matzo. So I'm like, okay, that's out. So it's almost like it, it's hard. Like once you... <laughs> And I have to say, the restaurants are just, I'm sure where you are, and there's some good restaurants in LA, but very overpriced. And very, yeah. in, in Europe, you just, oh, you go to these little places, these little mom shop places, and it's just like this incredible food with the wine. It's like, you know, in LA. Well, then you get the bill and you're just like, that can't be real. Like, absolutely. That, that's it? That, and, and, and that's LA, like the tip. Over and here. I don't want to down <laughs> LA. The LA has some good restaurants, but I have to say I'm a gourmet. And if I'm gonna go to a high end, and, and you know, let's say you want to drop two, three hundred bucks a meal, man, it just still doesn't do it justice. It's yeah. like <laughs> it's like it's not like, it's like Europe. You're for the and name, I'm sure not New the York, <laughs> New York has incredible, you know, New York, but. Sydney, oh, God, you'd love it. It's just like uh, right out of the water, the food. Once you eat that fish, it's, you know, it's mm. just like so fresh with all these international chefs, you know, that just, there's just so much flavor, you know. Yeah. So I'm pretty, we're pretty picky. That's cool. That's we cool. know how to cook. <laughs> that, that's awesome. And my friends always come back. That's how you know. I, ne I never really had any desire necessarily to go go to california um but uh i had a, a very dear friend of mine move out there so i'd love to go see her and see how she's doing but um well, she come thanksgiving but if i if i well come i, I won't do that i won't do that because my my kids come back from dominican republic on wednesday uh -huh. and this in 14 days of quarantine that's and right. So uh, I'm going to look forward to enjoying Thanksgiving with the family and, and the kids. Sure. You know. So this Thanksgiving um, is going to be the best Thanksgiving I've ever had. And um, but next Thanksgiving, maybe. <laughs> or, you know, if you pass it or some through. Other time. Yeah. My we'll thought is I, I love I love where I live in Erie, but I, I'm trying to. Uh, the summer has just been incredible, go incredibly gorgeous because of the lake and the sunsets and, and oh. the cool coolness from the from the lake. But starting in November, um, then it turns into winter season sure. from from November to April. And you know, two years ago they had six feet of snow on Christmas Eve, right? So I'm not Why? looking forward to that. So I'm like, okay. That's the, the world time to come to Cali. That's my thought. You know, I'm like, I'll, yeah. I'll come back after April. But for a couple months, I, I just need to go find some other place to yeah. exist in. I don't, I'm not looking forward to that. So I won't be here in the winter. Where I'll be <laughs> is yet to be determined. I'll come <laughs> back in the, in the, in the spring. But um, that was a beautiful. I, I really enjoyed our conversation. And um, me too. So Thank where you. can people find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at mm -hmm. Find Art by Frangier. Mm -hmm. You can find me at www.findartbyfrangier.com. And you can find me on Facebook under Find Art by Frangier. F O U R N I E R. I. Yeah, I, I I like my last name, you know, for my art name. I yeah. mean, sometimes people get a little confused for Fournier, fine art by Fournier. But I don't know. I'm just really connected to the Fournier as my name. You know, I kept my name when I got married too. You know, I just I like Fournier. <laughs>
So does your and husband. I, <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to keep the legacy going for my dad. He died when he was mm. 61. So I wanted oh, okay. to keep the yeah. Fernier going. Yeah. Now, your husband's name is Frank, right? No, his name is Craig. Craig. I thought you said Frank earlier. Okay, Craig, Craig. Okay. Craig, yeah. So that kind of destroys my little joke I was going to say. Uh, okay. Frank Fournier. <laughs> Craig. Yeah, he actually took my, uh, he took my Fournier name. So his name now is Craig Fournier Schultz. Really? And he's German out of all Dang. the people. Look he's German-American. He's born in America. Yeah. But he, his whole background is German. You got a strong man there who uh Oh yeah. Uh huh. That's cool. We gotta talk Pepper. to him one day. Huh? <laughs> the Germans are like Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's very beautiful. All right. Well I will add those uh your Facebook, your Instagram and your And I websites. can I can send it to you too if that helps. Yeah. Oh, I already have it. Oh yeah. So I'll okay. put the, uh, I have I'll put that in the show notes, and then um, if you can send me that picture of that painting, then I'll put that up on the. Um, uh, sure, um, if that's your pick, okay. Yeah. I'll take a look at it and then I'll make a decision. All right, so beautiful, Marie. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much for having me. Indeed, this was wonderful.